and welcome to this session on frictionless migration to AEMS. This is a cloud service. My name is Ian Reeser. I'm a senior engineer uh, on the AEM Assets engineering team out here in California. And with me on the line today, we have Sam Apatade, uh, who's from the Boston area as a principal consultant in our Adobe customer solutions team. Uh, we'll be doing a short talk and then uh, in a little while, we'll be going through our workshop. So let's start by talking about what's new in asset processing in AEM Assets as a cloud service. Um, so the first thing to know is that we've got a new microservice we call the Asset Compute Service that takes care of our asset processing. Uh, we'll get into how that works and why we're using that shortly. We have processing profiles that we uh, configure to set up how that Asset Compute Service is gonna work. Uh, for instance, the different sizes of renditions that you might want as an example. Uh, and then we've set up a custom workflow runner. We recognize that there are still times in which uh, you're going to potentially need to run customer workflows when you're done processing assets. Uh, we can't necessarily fire off those asset workflows based on uh, the simple JCR events that we've been used to due to the asset processing being externalized. Um, and so we've set up a special OSGI service for this purpose. Uh, and you'll <coughs> have configurations for that as well. So let's start by looking at why we've made these changes. If we look at asset ingestion in AEM 6.5 and earlier versions of AEM, you have a client that goes through a load balancer or a dispatcher when uploading an asset to AEM. AEM would then take those binaries and sync them in the back end with a cloud storage provider and then do all of its processing inside of the JVM. Um, anybody who's worked in this paradigm knows that there's some constraints here though. We've got bandwidth limitations, uh, usually by the size of the virtual machine. If you've worked in AMS, you know that uh, a larger VM uh, comes with larger uh, pipes in and out of it as well. Uh, in addition to that, we're limited by the IO and CPU inside that single virtual machine, since all that processing is happening inside the JVM. Uh, the size that we were able to size one instance to was basically the size that we were able to scale to. So that kind of put a ceiling uh, on us. Moving into a cloud service, we kind of rethought, well, how are we gonna be able to take this and really scale to the next level? And to do that, we had to basically break asset processing and binary handling out of AEM altogether. So on a cloud service, what you'll see is that the client goes and actually requests an upload from AEM. And AEM will return a signed URL to that client for the binary cloud storage provider. The client then uploads the asset via CDN directly to the binary cloud storage provider and then tells AEM that it's completed the upload. So you'll see these three messages that, that constantly happen. Once AEM receives that complete upload message, it then goes to the asset compute service, again, sending a pre-signed URL and tells the asset compute service based on the processing profiles, which renditions it needs. The asset compute service then interacts directly with the binary cloud storage provider to pull the asset in, generate the renditions, and then stick the renditions back into the binary cloud storage provider, eventually letting AEM know that it is completed. So in terms of migrating to how we're gonna configure this, um, let's take a look at the few places where we're gonna have to go in and make these types of configurations. And we'll do that by looking at the overall asset lifecycle. So to start with, an asset gets uploaded. Uh, in order to make things work a little faster here in the cloud, uh, we've actually made an improvement where we are simultaneously sending an asset out to uh, processing in our asset microservice, or and uh, processing in dynamic media if it has been enabled. Um, so that's, that's one thing you'll notice. In terms of that uh, microservice processing, that's where we'll uh, use processing profiles to determine uh, what renditions have been configured for this asset, if watermarking has been enabled, uh, these types of things. So that's the first configuration point. We'll need to take what's in place today for the customer and determine what do we need uh, in these processing profiles. Once all of the asset processing has been done by the asset microservice and by dynamic media, we'll move into custom workflow processing. That's where that custom dam workflow runner comes into play. The first thing it's gonna do is look at its configuration. Uh, and this could be either the OSGI configuration for the service 
or it could be the folder properties in the dam. Um, so the most simple, straightforward way that we would expect most customers to use this would be just to enable it via a folder in the UI. However, uh, in order to have full parity with what you, <coughs> excuse me, with what you had available to you as an option um, via workflow launchers and to support migration, we also allow an OSGI configuration where you can use a regular expression. Um, so we'll first check to see if anything has been enabled for this specific asset. Uh, if it has, we'll go in and run that workflow. And uh, we won't just be able to run the workflow as it is today on an AEM 6.5 instance, because that workflow contains steps such as uh, thumbnail generation that's all being handled for us by the asset compute service. Uh, so we'll have to update that workflow uh, and that workflow model to remove any of those steps uh, that shouldn't be run on AEM assets as a cloud service. Uh, if the custom workflow is not configured, we have one out of the box that we are currently running called the Assets Cloud Post-Processing Workflow. Uh, this workflow today just contains a step to submit the asset to the smart tagging service, uh, although that may eventually be moved out of the workflow in the future. Uh, after either workflow finishes, uh, the final step that it executes will be the dam update asset workflow completed process. And this is something that uh, will actually uh, require customers to have in a custom workflow here. Reason being that we want to be able to mark the asset as completed when it's fully done processing and not just when it's done, uh, you know, in the asset compute service, getting its, its renditions created. So this could be uh, quite a bit of work to go through and set all of this up. And we wanted to lower the barrier to entry as much as possible for customers and uh, our partners to be able to migrate our customers. <laughs> And so to support that, we developed a workflow migration tool. Uh, you can see here, uh, it's available on GitHub. It's an open source project. Um, and uh, yeah, you could go download that today, run it today. We're gonna be going through this quite a bit in the uh, workshop section just in, in a little while here. And we'll be providing it to you there as well. Um, I guess we'll be having you download it there as well. Um, but you'll be able to get your hands on with it. Uh, let's just take a quick look at what this tool does. So it's going to go through and it's going to create Maven projects. Uh, you may be aware that in uh, newer versions of AEM and newer versions of our Maven archetypes, that we've split out uh, mutable and immutable content into separate projects, namely content that lives under apps and content that lives elsewhere in the content hierarchy. So uh, depending on what this tool creates, if it creates mutable content, it'll create a project for that, or immutable content, it'll create a project for that. It'll also automatically integrate these new projects with your reactor project. We then go in and disable any launchers that we determine are related to asset processing. So generally any launcher that is fired off on a file creation or modification event under content dam, we assume is likely to be an asset processing workflow and it gets disabled here. We then look at the workflow models that those launchers were calling. If it was, say, just an out-of-the-box workflow model with no modifications to it, then there's no, nothing for us to do here. However, there are two types of things that we're looking for here. Uh, we're looking for configuration of out-of-the-box workflow processes. These would be things like custom thumbnails that have been specified. And we'll use those later when we create processing profiles. And we're also looking for custom workflow steps that are still going to need to be executed. In the case where we find custom workflow steps that are going to need to be executed, what we'll do is we will edit that workflow model, removing any steps that are inappropriate to be executed on AEM assets as a cloud service, leaving behind just those steps that need to be run. And we'll uh, make sure that that dam update asset workflow completed process is inserted at the end of the workflow. We then configure the custom workflow runner to execute those workflow models when asset processing completes based on the launchers that were previously disabled. So we disable the launcher, we look at the, uh, the pattern used to launch that launcher, and then we uh, pair that with the workflow model. And that, that gets generated as an OSGI configuration. And then we create processing profiles, again, based on those configurations that we found in the workflow models. Uh, and that's for any of the out-of-the-box processing that we can support um, by, you know, by reading and bringing over. Uh, 
And then finally, we create a migration report. This is just a markdown document that goes through uh, and walks you through everything that the tool has done in terms of projects it's created, things it's disabled, things it's transformed, things it's created, uh, et cetera. Uh, and this is all done in place on the customer source code. Uh, the reason for that is that we wanted to make it, again, as simple as possible to do this. And so we do it all in place with the idea that you can do that, you can build the project, make sure it builds properly, and then you can check it in and deploy it to your development environment in the cloud and test it all out with the asset compute service and, and all of your processing in place. If it turns out there's a problem, you don't like the way that it uh, did something, you could either change it or you could just roll it back. Since you've got source control there, you can uh, revert the, the check-in uh, and uh, no changes will be persisted. So, um, so with that, uh, we've got a few minutes left for questions and answers. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay, uh, I'm not seeing any questions come up, but we will uh, hang out for a few more minutes. So if anything comes up, feel free to ask. So the question came in, how will debugging work with asset-related workflows? Um, so <clears throat> in terms of uh, debugging, um, you'll be able to develop uh, locally on your local developer SDK. However, you won't have access to the asset compute service there. So what we would recommend that you do is uh, you write your custom workflow code. You can run that on your local SDK uh, via the workflow launcher, via dam update asset, uh, however, however you'd like. Um, and then when you uh, put that into the custom workflow that you'd like to be executed by the asset compute service when it completes, uh, you'll have to upload that into your development environment. Once you get to the development environment in the cloud, uh, that's, that's where you'll actually be able to integrate with the asset compute service and test it end to end. Um, so, and then any issues there, you'd have to, you know, look at your logs or, um, or, you know, et cetera. Uh, the question is, how will this asset compute service be billed? Uh, my understanding is that it's included with AEM as a cloud service and uh, does not carry additional charges with it. All right, well, that brings us to time here. Uh, if you have other questions that come up, uh, we'll be together in the workshop as well. Uh, Sam, it will be doing most of the uh, um, presenting there, but I'll also be on hand, so either of us can answer your questions as they, as they come up then. Thanks for joining us.